like a hell cut. Hello people and welcome back to the channel and once again it's time for our monthly conquest video. Obviously our magazines are now more than two weeks behind. We had an email this month saying they were going to be even later than they are so I was actually quite surprised to get them today. But anyway let's get on and do it. We've got issue 39 talking about our new Primaris Captain. Issue 40 which comes with three new paints. Issue 41 the first part of our Plague Burst Crawler and then issue 42 which comes with the second part of our massively powerful Plague Burst Crawler. So without further ado let's get on and take a look at this month's Conquest magazines. Okay so our Primaris Captain comes on two sprues like this. He's a 22 pound 50 model he is meaning you get a saving of 14 pounds 51 on this model another nice model personally obviously I've said before I don't think these small Individual models are anywhere uh, near worth that but that's for you to decide So let's get on and take a look at the issue itself Okay, so first up we've got issue 39 which comes with a Primaris captain and it talks about the history of mankind space marine fleets and Captain Sicarius, which is what he is being called, and it tells us about Captain Sicarius here. He's Heroes 4.1 with his plasma pistol, his mantle of the Caesarean and the Talisarian Tempest Blade. Awesome. Turning over, it gives us more information about Captain Sicarius as well down here. If you did watch last month's video, you'll know that I didn't record it like this. I did, just did still screenshots and spoke about them, but I'm going back to this method method this month. Over the page we've got factions 2.12 which is Rotigus, Rainfather, Demon of Nurgle. Turning over it gives us lots more background and story about him and it tells us about the gnarl rod that Rotigus bears of all the strange plants in Nurgle's garden. The horn beam is Plague God's favourite. This rod is a symbol of his favour and is rich in regenerative magic. Over the page then we've got History Part 8 which tells us about the ages of mankind. Flicking over we've got more um, story there. M1 to M15, M15 to M25 and that is quite a long bit of back story there. Over the page then we've got uh, Space Marine Chapters 1.10. The Battle Fleets of the Adeptus Starters. And it gives us background information on all of that stuff there flicking over it carries on a battle barge can launch hundreds of space marines in mere minutes a space marine fleet emerges from the depths of the warp ready for combat so there's a picture of the warp there over the page then we've got how to build your space marine primaris captain as always detailed guide step by step tells you exactly what to stick and where to give you your complete model down here. Quite a nice model, I think. Probably not worth £22.50, but he is a fairly nice model. Over the page then, how to paint your Primaris Captain. So, bog standard spray in blue to start with is pretty much the um, the straight the straightforward thing before using Rakarth Flesh, Retributor Armour, more Retributor Armour up there before going on to the Lead Belcher for the various bits and pieces, a bad and black, Mephiston Red, with Silistra Grey, shows you how to paint the Helmet Crest as well in a bit more detail, Mechanicus Standard Grey Bits, Bolt Gun Details, shading him with Agrat's Earthshade Non Oil, before giving you your final model over the page looking pretty impressive if I'm honest. If mine can look as good as that, I will be very, very satisfied. It does give you a detailed guide as well how to paint your bare head if you choose that one down the bottom too. Bold, Boldy Locks, <laughs> Seize the Beacons, Missions 23. Ultramarines Captain Archeran, Communication Relay Hero Central Barakius. Victory is in sight, brothers. Slay the heretics for the Emperor. For McCragger, for Gilliman. Forward to glory. So it tells us about Network Error, the name of the battle. Communications across the planet of Corvon 2 have been disrupted by the battles raging across the surface. Barakius holds one of the main communication networks, and they're going to clash over it. The Foul Blight Spore, Todd Poxhawk as the Tainted Cohort, the Mephitic Blight Hauler, 
Five Plague Marines face off against the Chaplain, the Captain, five Intercessors, three Aggressors, and three Hell Blasters. Over the page, then, we get the profile for a Primaris Captain detailing all of the bits and bobs that he possesses. Then it just gives us information that from issue 41 onwards, our battles will be on the new playmat. And it tells us, obviously, our next issue comes with the three new paints, and issue 41 comes with the part first part of the Plague Burst crawler okay so issue 40 comes with your three paints you get wild rider red you get your liberator gold and you get your storm host silver so the paints have a value of eight pound 25 which means you save 26p on their individual prices so let's go and take a look at the magazine okay so issue 40 is next on the hitness Marnius Kalga painting with layer paints and new warlord traits so it tells us about space marines Marnius Kalgar space marine hero 2.1 he is a chapter master and he uses the gauntlets of ultramar Turning over then, it gives us more um, detail about his gauntlets. Uh, Rubicon Primaris. Um, the Imperium Ninilus. Whilst we stand, we fight. Whilst we fight, we prevail. Nothing shall stay our wrath. Over the page then, we've got information on Death Guard Demon Princes. Champions number 10. Now, I would have loved to have been getting a Demon Prince in this collection, but unfortunately... We're not. Weapons and powers, demonic axes, hellforged swords, male malefic talons, and psychic powers. Battle for your role, leader or psychers. Demon princes are pretty cool. And over the page, it gives us an example of Nurgle demon princes. And then the ascended slanish, zinch, the favored, and corn. All different demon prince models. Any of which would have been really cool to have in the collection. But it's not to be, and we go straight on to then highlighting with paint. So there's not much background information on this one. It gives us how to highlight gold, silver, red. How to prepare the painting area before it goes on to highlighting all different bits. Liberator gold on your models. Storm host silver on your models. Wild Rider Red, all the little bits that need that, that highlights and details added to them. The finished model, completely finished of the captain there. He is a great looking model when he is painted that good. Shows the back as well. If I could paint my models that good, I would be very, very happy. Space Marine Warlord Trains here. So this is um, Faction Rules Part 2 and it tells you about different effects that the D6 role has on the traits for a captain and it gives you examples the storm of fire and champion of humanity examples over the page and it gives us death guard warlord traits which is faction rules two for those and again six different traits decided by a dice roll before giving us examples of arch contaminator and rotten constitution on this page before we go on to mission 24 storm the walls Basically, we've got um, a sort of like an overview map there, sort of like to do a campaign sort of thing. The assault on Brachius has been costly in lives and material, but finally the end is near. Death Guard forces have withdrawn to the fortified palace of Governor Tarch. They are well protected, prepared for a long siege, and confident that the palace is too valuable to simply destroy or ignore. So, preparing for war. This is mission 24, and it gives us a layout there. The deployment zones either side. Models cannot move through or draw line of sight through the area. So they're the ramparts, and it's it's signified those on the, the map for the castle. Sorry, I pointed across the other side, but it's just this bit here. The palace gate even has its own toughness, wounds, and armor save. Players may add one unit from their chart during their movement phase, and it tells you the armies here. The starting armies and the reinforcements as well, victory conditions. The Death Guard player gains one victory point for each enemy unit that is slain. Both players gain one victory point for slaying the Warlord. The Space Marines gain six victory points for destroying the gates. Space Marines gain three victory points if a friendly unit is within one inch of the gates at the end of the game. And the game lasts for five turns. 
over here we've got terrain six and it tells us about the governor's palace gate and the effect that it has it gives us a bit that here we can use this on the map to represent the gate and over this page tells us obviously that this is coming and also we've got some wound tokens that you can cut out to use as well and it tells us that obviously we've got our plague burst we lost focus there plague burst crawler parts one and two coming up okay so issues 41 and 42 obviously come with the plague burst crawler this model's a 40 pound model which means across the two issues you do save um 24 pounds Basically, on this model, it is a big tank, you know, similar size to the Rhino we had previously. And this is obviously one of the kind of exciting models, the big, powerful models that most people have probably been looking forward to. So let's go and take a look at the two issues as well. Issue 41 tells us about the Playboy's Crawler discovering the Space Wolves and using your new playmat. So, of course, we go straight on to Death Guard. Playburst Crawler, War Machine 6, and its role is Mobile Artillery. Bang, bang, bang. So it shows us pictures of it, gives us information about it, storyline, I guess, kind of relating to it. Before talking about the war gear of the Playburst Crawler, the Mortar, the Heavy Slugger, the Entropy Cannon, and the Ramblade mounted to the front of the Playburst Crawler as well. It's pretty impressive looking model with multiple ways to destroy it tells us about each of the weapons on this page before we go over to the space wolves which is chapter six for the space marines it tells us about the home war home world their primark uh, major engagements specialisms before it gives us their paint scheme over the page Fenrisian Wolves talks about those at the bottom before we go into Warzone Fenris is which uh, 40k Warzones 2 the invasion of Fenris some nice artwork down the bottom before talking about the siege of Fenris here um, some storyline basically for you to read we go on to how to build our Plague Burst Crawler this is potentially the most difficult model to build so far tracking back in my mind probably the biggest model i assume a similar size to a rhino but yeah it's much more complicated there's loads of pieces to stick together so really do stick to the guide and follow it carefully when building this model because you don't really want to make any mistakes you want it to look as good as possible comes on to highlights so it doesn't tell us how to paint this one it tells us highlights for death guard using your three paints that you got in your last issue so again it tells us where to use our liberator gold our storm host silver and our wild rider red that's quite a cool name for paint wild rider red warzone kalon so it tells us corvon 2 playmat tutorial 22 so it tells us about this playmat and where bits of scenery and stuff are gonna go the plasmas the hatch the a little bit of a hematrope reactor and the alchemite stack. Turn it over then, it tells us about each of these terrain pieces in detail before going on to the mission briefing, War Without End, which is mission number 25. Under siege, the Space Marines forces under Captain Arkaran have landed in Kalon. The Death Guard are already in position surrounding the city and the Death Guard must press their advantage and capture their objectives before the Space Marines can move into position and establish their defences. So you've got your deployment zones and it tells us our army's deployment and our victory conditions at the bottom, like usual, our bog standard sort of page there before it tells us that we're getting the second part of the Plague Burst Crawler and then our Thermic Plasma Regulators in issue 43. Wrapping it up for this month, we've got issue 42 how to paint your crawler, rules for the crawler, and the Garden of Nurgle. So we've got Ages of Mankind, which is History Part 8, to start off this issue. Now it's, it's difficult to open this issue. Two solid pages of this covering the years 25, M25 to M30, the Age of Strife. Moving over then, the Eye of Terror, Domains 2, before the 
Sikuchix Melodictum. The Eye of Terror was the largest warp rift in the known galaxy. So it's about a, a, a warp rift, the bane of warp travel that eye opens the Cadian Gate. Turning over then, we've got information about the Domain of Evil, the Heretic Astartes, Eternal War. Yeah, thankfully our planet doesn't look like that. The Garden of Nurgle, then Factions 2.1. And the Garden of Nurgle is the Domain of the Lord of Plagues. It's said to be located deep within the Immaterium, the seething storm of madness, where the gods of chaos make their homes. It is a foetid jungle, an overgrown hive of pestilence and disease. A rancid paradise. Not my kind of paradise, personally. The bar ponds, the deathbeds, the house of putrefaction, Nurglings, the slow hunt. Few survivors do escape Nurgle's oubliette. Well, not surprised. Battles number 20, then, ground to dust. The Death Guard have laid siege to an Adeptus Mechanicus Fortress Factorum Castellum Ferris. With the enemy dug in, Atrophus Phage, Lord of Contagion, directs the final assault on the loyal positions, on the loyalist positions. With Plague Burst Crawlers in tow, the Death Guard advance begins. So we get to see our Plague Burst Crawler in action. More information over that page. How to paint your crawler. So you need a lot of paints to paint this one. Need to undercoat it with Death Guard Green to start with before getting on top of all those metal bits with Lead Belcher. Move it over, we get the Retributor Armor done. Rakarth Flesh, Bugman's Glow. Already it starts to look good. Then we get the shade in with the Amothan Camo Shade, Reichland Flesh Shade, it's a long guide, known oil, Agrax Earth Shade, how to highlight your crawler with Liberator Gold, Stormhost Silver, your finished model over the page, and he looks ready to cause mayhem. If there are any errors to fix, remember to make sure the model is dry before going back to paint them. That goes without saying, I would assume. Ready for battle for, you know, the battle for Galon play on, play on, playing three rules. So it tells us about Kalon, the battle where, um, the area where our battles will take place now. And we've got a map here, sort of like your campaign map. Mission briefing, Kalon must fall. This is mission number 26. Siege of the City. The mission uses both of your mats as a battlefield. Oh, so it's like a, a really big one then, I guess? Line up the road sections as shown here. Before deployment, the Space Marine player places three objective markers on the mat. They must be 12 inches away from each other and 6 inches away from mat edges. Pretty straightforward, but as you will see, the armies, they do have the Plague Burst Crawler and the Mephitic Blight Hauler. Two units of three Plague Marines, Felthias and 12 Pox Walkers. To go against the three Hellblasters, the Dreadnought, five Intercessors, your Captain, and three Aggressors. And it's a five-round battle, and it gives us the Plague Burst Crawler detailed thing. Some of the model's characteristics change as it suffers damage. So we've got our Entropy Cannon, our Heavy Slugger, our Plague Burst Mortar, our Plague Spitter, and our Rot, Rot, Rot Hail Volley Gun. All kinds of destruction going on with this model. Before turning over, we see that obviously issue 43 comes with our plasma regulators and issue 44s. Um, probably the worst issue to date because it just comes with a reflow of lead belcher and necron compound and that is it. So that's it for our magazines this time. I just noticed this magazine has actually come ripped on the back page. Not not important actually. Would have been a bit more annoyed if it had been another page, but that's it for these issues. Until we meet again next month, drop any comments down below if you've got any, any thoughts, anything you're excited about, anything you were disappointed with, and I will see you soon.